Good morning. The other day when we got snow, we didn't get any at the off-grid property, but we got quite a bit at our old homestead. And we got the tool cat out, we were using that. Got it stuck pretty good, I got into a predicament. Got it out, we put the tire chains on, and I was getting help getting all that. We noticed we had a hydraulic leak. At some point with all of that going on, we blew a hydraulic line. Wasn't anything I did, it was just the timing of it. You come in over here, it's this hydraulic line right here, and it rubs up against the chassis or the frame, and that's where it blew. So it goes from there inside to this piston right here. I was able to get it loose with my wrench on the end inside. Out here, I needed a crow's foot. I didn't have one, so I had ran to Harbor Freight, picked up a crow's foot. So the goal is today is to get that off, get a new line made, get it put back on and see if we can get this up to the off-grid property. So it's not this hose, but basically this is what I gotta get free inside there. So let's go grab the flashlight. It's right there. If I can break it free, we should be good. And then I'm gonna tie a piece of string to it, pull it out or pull, maybe I'll pull it out this way. And then we'll put the new piece in. Hopefully it goes that easy. We're gonna find out. Look at the doctor with your gloves and your light. All right, I need a longer extension. All right, hopefully this works. Why is that tight? Ooh. There we go. There goes the crow's foot. But I think we got it. I don't know where the crow's foot went. I got it free, but I lost the crow's foot. But unfortunately, I lost it in there because it fell off. And I see it way down there. So we're probably gonna have to stop and get a magnet while we're out so we can get that. See it? Nope. Oh, yeah, I see it. The cylinder. Yep. Luckily, we're going to our local Napa to have a hose made and we can get a long magnet to get our crow's foot out. So it should be this one right here. it loose already. There we go. All right, so if you're ever working on hydraulics, be careful. Don't have stuff up in the air. This one right here does the curl of the bucket. So we have the bucket down and we're not under it. If you had this bucket up in the air and it was the hydraulic for the main piston and you took that hose off, that's gonna come crashing down on you and could squish you in. So when you're working on hydraulics, it's always, always, always safety first. If you gotta work on a piston that's up, they do make safety blocks and stuff like that. So just always be safe. Ratchet strap to the rescue again. I have a bunch of parts and pieces left over from broken ratchet straps. I don't know if it's necessary, but when I changed out the hose on the Bobcat excavator, I did the same thing, pulled a line through. So then you have a line going where it came from. So when you go to put the new one on, you can just kind of whoosh, fit right in. So now I'm gonna try to pull this one out. All Hold right. on, it's, cut, it's like, Stuck right in the so I'm gonna need you to feed this. Ready? Yeah. It doesn't even wiggle. What's that? It doesn't even wiggle. Mm -hmm. So oh, here we go. We got a 90 degree fitting on this end that's getting bound up, so I'm gonna have to pull it from here this way. I was hoping to pull it 
out because I didn't want to get any hydraulic fluid in the cab. It's not looking that way. All right, let's try that. There we go. It's not hooked to it. The oh. string's right here. Okay. It just popped off at the very end. So now we just gotta go to Napa, get some, get a hose made up. That's not that long. And then put it back in. So right here, you can see it was wearing on the frame. And that's where it blew. It's kind of odd that it blew at the point that it blew at with everything else going on. Just kind of one of those things. It's like Murphy's Law. When things aren't going good, more things don't go good. I do believe this is a original equipment line just because usually when equipment is sent brand new, they go through and they torque a lot of stuff at the factory and they mark on them. And this has the white marks and then it has the white marks on the hydraulic body also. So I'm thinking it was original equipment. So 2015, seven year old hose, it's not too bad. So if we get another seven years out of the next one, I'll be happy. It is definitely original equipment or at least a Bobcat hose because right here we have the part number. So I could go online, I could order this hose from Bobcat. it will probably take a few days to get it, maybe a week. So I'm gonna see if we can get one made at Napa so that way we don't have to wait. All right, well, luckily, Napa was able to make us the hose. They had a magnet, and I was able to get hydraulic fluid. So everything we needed at one place. Now let's get this back on and get it up and running. All right, first thing we gotta do is we gotta get the crow's foot out. You gotta go fishing? Gotta go fishing. Magnet fishing. Got it. It's a big one. Oh. It's a good size. It's three quarters. <laughs> so they make the hoses right at the local Napa. They cut the hose to length and they figure out what ends you need and they crimp them on. So this is a high pressure hose. And I didn't bring it in, I gotta go grab it. I had him cut me a piece of heater hose that I'm gonna stick over this in zip tie. So where it rubs up against the frame, it should keep it from rubbing into this hose. All right, so I need you to feed this down to me while I pull. The side is on and started. I want you to tighten it up. Let me go inside there and get that one. All right. Tight quarters, but I think we got it. So this is a crow's foot, basically the end of a wrench that you can put a socket on. So if you can't get the leverage with this, you can have your ratchet on like this and do your work. All right. That should do it. And we didn't lose the crow's foot that time. So we'll start it up, let it run for a second, try it out, and then we're gonna fill up our hydraulic fluid.
Make sure we don't have any leaks. It looks good. I'm gonna spray some brake clean on just to clean it up, but I'm not seeing anything fresh. So that one right there, when you curl down and put pressure on is when it was leaking. That's what that line does. And I could watch from the inside when I was putting pressure on it, you could see the, fl the line flexing. So there was, I'll make sure there's no leaks in there, but it didn't look like it. So we should be good. It is nice and dry in there. And where that hose hits the frame, we do have it covered with a piece of the heater hose. So that'll make the hose last longer. That was low, maybe two quarts, a quart and a half. Not bad. I really like the tire chains on it. If I would have had the tire chains on the other day, I wouldn't have got stuck and all that stuff would never happen. There's a reason why I didn't put the tire chains on and you'll see that in a minute. Mm. So we just got our biggest egg harvest for the day. We got four dirty eggs. But most of our chickens are new and just starting to lay. The old ones are not laying right now. So this is exciting. We've been getting like one or two. So to double our egg production is huge this time of the year. Gina's got a sourdough loaf in the oven and it smells amazing. So we're just leaving the OGP to go back to the other homestead. I just unloaded hay and grain for the goats. And when I was there, I went out back and we saw the generator. And it looks like there's a puddle of oil by our brand new Cummins generator. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I didn't have time to check it. Because we need to get back to the other homestead for a uh, delivery. So... Once we get that delivery, we're gonna to have to go back up. So this is gonna be getting dark soon. We gotta figure out what the oil leak is from. I wanna thank our friends over at Scott's Recreation and New Hampshire Central Trailer. I needed a trailer, so I called them up. We ended up ordering an N and N galvanized trailer. We also got a new bucket for the big TYM. We got a cutting edge on this one, so we won't be, you know, bending the bucket anymore. So what we should have done from the beginning is had a cutting edge, and we didn't. So I really want to start using this trailer. We've been waiting for it. We have a bunch of things we need to move, but we need to get up to the OGP and check out that generator. The sun is setting. And I don't want to be fixing the generator in the dark. And if we don't have power, we'll be in the dark all night long. So we're going to leave the N and N tilt trailer here. We'll be back in the morning. All right, we're back at the OGP. I have no idea what it is for a leak because I found it and I had to leave to meet the driver. And luckily I didn't waste any time because the driver was pulling in right in front of me. So let's go see what that leak is. I'm hoping it's a loose oil filter or a loose drain nut. Here, I'll show you what I saw. There is some kind of oil leak right there is what it looks like to me. Maybe it's nothing, but it seems kind of odd. I don't know if it was when they did their plumbing work, but I don't see any oil over there. So we need to take this apart and see what that's from.
have oil up high here. I'm not seeing it coming from anywhere. You got your dipstick tube that's wet on the base there. Up high is dry. Down there, there's a puddle. It's running from up high. So I don't know if it was over full and it was coming out of the dipstick tube or what. I have no idea where that would be coming from. All right, so we are gonna start the generator and see if we can observe it. I'm not seeing any leaks. So sometimes they coat motors from factory with an oil coating. I don't know if that's what that is or not. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up where the oil is and then I'm gonna run it for a while and see if we get any new oil. But as of right now, I'm not seeing anything leaking. I don't know, I have no clue guys. I have no idea where this oil came from. All right, let's fire it back up and we'll let it run and then come back out and check it. All right, we had the generator running for just over an hour. I'm curious to see, I guess I locked it. I'm curious to see if we have any oil leakage. There is a little bit. Interesting. All that is wet with oil again. But I'm not sure where it's coming from. I'm going to clean this all up. I'll run it again in the morning. I'll make sure I get this dipstick tube cleaned up really good. Because I'm wondering if it's coming out the dipstick tube and then running down. Doesn't really make any sense why it would do that. But I think that's where it's coming from. So I'm going to clean that up and I'll see you guys in the morning. So we decided we needed a trailer to move all of our equipment around. And like our chicken coops and all of everything we need to move, we needed a trailer. So I spent a lot of time looking at what we needed and I called up our friends over at Central New Hampshire Trailer and Equipment slash Scott's Recreation. And I was talking to the owner over there and I said, hey, Reed, what do you recommend for a trailer? And he just listed off a bunch of stuff. I said, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a full tilt, which this is. I said, what, what, are your best, what do you think is the best? And he said, Either go with a powder coating or galvanized. So he got on the phone with his buddies over at N&N &N Trailer. So between the two of them, we got hooked up with a really sweet deal on this trailer. So I want to thank them. So this is an 18 foot long, full tilt, 14,000 pound heavy duty trailer. It's galvanized because they like to use a lot of salt in the roads. And that just rusts out the normal trailer. So this will last us quite a long time. I almost want to say a lifetime. So in here we have all the hydraulics. We got our hydraulic tank, we got a battery, we got our control. When I get hooked up to the truck, I'll show you a little bit better. But the in and out part of it controls our hydraulic jack. They upgraded us with a hydraulic jack versus a hand crank. So this is gonna be really nice. Up down for the full tilt. We also got a 10,000 pound winch on it. So this way, if we want to pull any buildings up or if we have a piece of equipment that is dead, we can just winch it on there right up in here again. It's the remote. There is a plug so you can plug in your battery because there's a battery tender if you want to make sure your battery stays charged or it goes dead on you. You have this little pin you got to pull. You slide this out and then on each side, we have two handles that we need to undo when we go to tilt it, which I'll show you guys in a minute. I'm gonna get it hooked up to the truck first. We have the full size tires, galvanized rims. We got a spare tire that matches, hemlock decking, nice, really rugged D rings to tie down to, and then these side rails. 
I really like how it's galvanized. All the other trails we've gotten are just been painted black and one winter out here using it, come springtime, it's all rusted up. So this we're not gonna have to worry about. It's got all LED lighting, which is nice. So let's get this thing hooked up to the truck and make our first move with it. We have quite a few we need to do. All right, we're gonna lower this down some because this the truck that hauled it in was a lot higher up off the ground than my truck. That should be close. All right, we have a lot of awkward loads today. So we're gonna bring this one the way it is, see how this trail is with the truck. I don't wanna move the bucket to the front and put light stuff on the back because then the weight of the trailer will be all on the tongue of the truck and it won't be riding as nice, especially for the first load. I kinda of wanna make sure we know how it all goes and the roads are a little slick right now. So we're gonna go bring this up to the OGP. TYM hooked us up with a new bucket and Scott's put a cutting edge on it for us. So we're gonna be good to go, whether we need it for snow removal or come springtime when we start some new building projects. This thing is hauling so nice. The other trailer that we have that we haul is our livestock trailer. That's a big trailer. And that thing, when you're hauling it, you know it's back there. This thing is hauling so smooth. You know it's back there because I can feel some weight on the back of the truck, but pulling it and braking and just slowing down, it is so smooth, you don't even know it. Oh, then like the lug on the motor of the truck from having something there. I'm really impressed. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little kind of like leery wondering how my truck was gonna pull it, but I'm happy. It's, there's a couple of different ways configurations you can get this trailer when you order it I don't know what exactly how what it's called but it's an offset an axle offset you can get one that's really low to the ground I got ours so it's offset a little bit higher so I think we're like three or four inches higher than one that's not because we're hauling on a dirt road and especially like where our driveway comes in from that driveway it pitches down so if I would have got it sitting lower I know we would have bottomed out quite a bit so if you're ever looking to get a trailer think about those kind of things let's uh get the old tym fired up and i think it'll be happy for a new bucket Well, that should make Tim happy. He's got a new bucket now. We got a bunch of anti-slip rubber mats. We'll save these, we might need them sometime. I'm liking this. Maybe we should start like a hauling business now. We can like go on the road and move equipment. Let's do ours first. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, let's get the girls hay feeder and see if we can get the boys on there too and get that back over to the OGP. I think the goats will like having their hay feeders back. Oh yeah, I ain't going anywhere. All right, we'll get the boys' feeder unloaded first. I gotta make a couple of repairs to it before I can give it to them. The bottom feet rotted off, so it's just the two by four, so I gotta put a base feet on it so it doesn't tip over. So we can't give that to them today. With the girls, we should be able to get that off and put it right in there. I think they're waiting for it. I've never been a trailer guy. I've always kind of like not hauling trailers at all, but this trailer hauls so nice. And I'm not just saying that. I'm really impressed with how well this hauls. We haven't done anything huge. I was hoping to get the tool cap moved, but we'll have to do that tomorrow. I want to get the Cummins generator fixed. So we got the tool cat to move and a chicken coop to move. This N and N full tilt trailer is awesome. I have no regrets, that's for sure. I ran the generator again for an hour this morning. And yeah, let me show you. There's still a little bit of oil right here and here. So I'm thinking under here, there's supposed to be a gasket or an O-ring and there isn't when I take that bolt out. So we're gonna clean that back up, take this off. We can't get it out completely because this is in our way. And we're gonna put a little bit of sealant in there after we clean it up. So when I pull this up, you're going to see some oil under there. See how that's wet? And there's nothing there. This tube goes down further into the 
motor, but there's nothing there for a seal. There's no O-ring. Can't pull it out all the way because it hits this case, but it is wet. So we're gonna seal that up today and see if that stops the leak. Because other than that, I have no idea where it'd be coming from. I don't see oil or fail oil anywhere else. I cleaned up the backside of that. That is dry. So I'm thinking it's gotta be in there. All right, so that is all cleaned up. We're only gonna need a little bit of Permatex. So let's get this opened and see if we can get it all the way around nicely. Stick that in there so we don't lose it. We don't need a lot, just a little bit. All right, that squished out nicely. I'll give it a minute and then I'm gonna start it up and let it run for about an hour and keep an eye on it and I'll let you know. The generator's been running for about 45 minutes right now. I'm curious to see if we have any leaks going on or not. Awesome, I am not seeing any leaks. We're gonna let that keep running and charge up the batteries while it's going. It'll probably take like another half hour or so. And we'll just check it at the end, but I think that's what it was. I don't know if there's supposed to be Permatex there, if there's supposed to be a gasket, but for some reason oil was coming out of there. We're gonna let that run and I'll check back in in a minute. All right, so I let the generator run for about an hour and a half. I am not seeing any oil. Yesterday when we let this run for about an hour, you saw the oil that was all over here. So yeah, it was definitely this area that was leaking. I didn't do a very pretty job with a Permatex, but it worked. So there must be a gasket that's supposed to go there. I'm not sure. If you know what's supposed to be there, let me know so that way I'll know. But yeah, I am excited that that leak is gone away because I don't like having a leak on anything, especially something that is brand new. So this is where we're gonna end the video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge bless to us in our homestead, wherever you are. I hope you are staying warm. It's supposed to get down to like 10 degrees tonight. So I wanna get this buttoned up before it gets too cold. Bye.